Good evening, prospective ninth and 10th graders. Uh, welcome to our virtual open house for Innovation Lab High School. It's Wednesday, June 10th, and it's been a fabulous Wednesday. Um, I'm still waiting for our OSPI guidance on uh, reopening school possibilities, but we're told we will receive that in the morning. Uh, so I hope I can get some sleep tonight. I've been waiting for those uh, recommendations. Um, and to that end, we really are excited about the work that we're gonna be incubating at Innovation Lab High School this fall. I know we had several parent events uh, this winter and there were still a number of details that we hadn't ironed out. Um, and I think it left questions in some people's minds uh, that perhaps wanted a little more information. So this evening, we're gonna be able to provide a little information uh, and we're really excited about the programming as it turns out, the entire district has been innovating the last three months. And so the opportunity to think about high school in a different way is really an opportunity for us today. If you haven't uh, realized it in terms of our board meetings, recently the State Board of Education, the Washington State Board of Education, granted a credit waiver for Innovation Lab High School, which is going to enable us to have a different type of a transcript based on student work and their actual best work, which can be exemplified on a transcript that's being piloted around the country as part of a national consortium. We're one of the very few public high schools that's gonna have an opportunity to be part of this groundbreaking work in concert with some of the top tier universities in the country, Yale, Harvard, um, and others are part of this consortium. And what they're looking for, some of these top tier post-secondary schools, is the opportunity to actually see student work and to actually be able to click in and see a student's lab, for example, or lecture or performance in a way that you can't when you just see a grade on a transcript. So we're really excited about being part of this groundbreaking work nationally. And particularly at this time in our country where, for example, our juniors were not able to do SAT or ACT exams this spring, and our AP exams were limited to 45 minute virtual exams. So we think there's never been a riper time to have an opportunity to innovate and try to incubate some ideas and practices and ways of teaching and learning that really are gonna form the foundation of our future in education. I think that it's really exciting to have the opportunity to partner with prestigious universities and researchers around the country. Innovation today more than ever is a critical commodity as I know many of you understand. I also am excited. I think about athletics. Many of you don't know that um, one of the uh, scholarships I had going to university was for athletics as well as academics. And I think athletics and activities, co-curriculars are really important. And we're thinking of piloting esports at Innovation Lab High School. So it'll be our first high school that sort of begins to examine the future of esports. And I'm not going to say much more than that because I know Principal Shirky um, and our teachers are excited to talk to you this evening. But I just think it's a fabulous time in public education where we can begin to imagine what tomorrow is going to require of our students to learn today and to actually be able to pivot to actually be able to pivot quickly and provide that instruction and that experience uh, to really prepare our students. Uh, for the work world and just the civic world yet to come. So it's my pleasure this evening to introduce our Innovation Lab High School principal, Principal Peter Shirky, and our director, um, our chief leadership and strategy officer, Dr. Tracy Malloy. And they have some uh, comments and they're gonna, I know Peter's excited to introduce staff. Um, we actually have a fabulous Innovation Lab High School staff already. Uh, on board and working hard. So without any further comment from me, Peter, why don't you share some of our news and an update on Innovation Lab High School? Thank you so much, Dr. Reed. It's, it's great to be here with all of you who are out there in the virtual world uh, joining us tonight. And we, we are uh, excited to share some of the, the staff who have joined us, share some of the thinking we've had around the planning that we're doing and to really bring you up to date on all the planning that's been happening in the last three or four months since we were last able to do any kind of a presentation with you. 
Um, first thing I want to do is return back to kind of the why of our work in designing Innovation Lab High School. And that gets back to my philosophy that it's not enough for us to just seek to engage our students in things they may not be interested in. What we really need to be doing at Innovation Lab High School to help our students become the very best human beings they can be is to be empowering them with the knowledge and the skills they need to chase their passions. As Dr. Tony Wagner told us about when he was here with us in February, it's that idea that goes through all of the research he has found about innovators that they started out in homes where their parents encouraged active play. They found a passion as adolescents and that led them to a purpose-driven life where they felt like the thing they were doing really mattered. And so what we need to do is empower our students to find their passions, really engage with them and lead them to that adulthood full of purpose that every adult craves. Um, toward that end, our staff came on board beginning in April and we have been planning strongly ever since then. Uh, planning really on two tracks. The first track is about really planning how to be intentional about building a community at Innovation Lab High School. Uh, we've centered on the expeditionary learning model and the central structure and culture of the expeditionary model is crew. The idea that we are all rowing the boat together. We are all part of the same team and that we are all going to help each other get to the finish line. That we, we use crew not just as a place to get stuff done, not just as a place to have our all the great things that we learn through this structure that we've built in, but also as the culture of the place. That every student is deeply well known by at least one staff member. That every student has a group of other students that it becomes their mutual support network. And we've been doing a lot of intentional planning about how we can open and build that, that sense of crew no matter what kind of a situation we're in to open in the fall. And the other track we've been working on is planning our first learning expedition of the school year. Uh, in the expeditionary learning model, an expedition is the long-term deep dive into an in interdisciplinary project that really ties together their students' learning in all of their different courses. And we've been looking at a lot of ideas to try and build a first expedition for our students that will really get them excited. And at the same time, we've been planning ways that we can try and figure out from our students what are the things they are beginning to tell us they are passionate about and incorporate those ideas into the second expedition of the year and the third expedition and the fourth, so that we are building the learning experiences for our students based on the things that they are passionate about. Because nothing gets a student interested in learning more than if it's about something that they care about. So with that, we're really excited to be able to introduce our staff to you this, this evening. Uh, unfortunately, one of our staff members and perhaps one of the, the people that I will be interacting with the most in the school is not able to be with us tonight because he is quite ill, but he sent me a, a thing that he wanted me to share with all of you so that he could be introduced through me. Uh, and that is our, our uh, counselor and director of student life, Chase Stevens. Chase wrote to me, I'm excited to join you in opening our new option school within North Shore for the 2020-2021 school year. There'll be a program like none other in the district where student voices will shine and thrive. Chase will be taking on, as I mentioned, the dual role of school counselor and also director of student life. As he puts it, quote, basically you can call me the cruise ship director working alongside the ship's captain and the crew. He's Joining Innovation Lab after spending three years as a school counselor at Inglemore High School. And prior to working at Inglemore, he was a school counselor in the Metro Detroit area in a magnet school program with similar themes to Innovation Lab. B 
Before the world of school counseling, he was pursuing a career in herpetology, and he invites students to ask him any time about his intense love of salamanders. He told me to, to say on his behalf that, and I quote, I look forward to welcoming each of our new students and families on board as we embark on a journey into the new educational territory for the North Shore School District. It's sure to be filled with twists, turns, challenges, and a whole lot of discovery. Grab a paddle and let's go do this. So that's our that's Chase. He's our our uh, counselor and our director of student life. Next person I would like to introduce to you is Alec McTavish. Alec will be our math and computer science teacher at Innovation Lab, and he's coming to us from Bothell High School. Alec. So uh, I often joke with students about coming to teaching in the usual way. Farm boy, got a degree in biomedical engineering, went straight to work as a software engineer at Microsoft, and six years later switched to teaching high school. Math first and then computer science too when that opportunity arose. So I guess not quite the usual path. But I love what I do now. My computer science program at Bothell High has grown as I hoped it would. It's on a great path. But Innovation Lab High School gives me the opportunity to teach in the way I've envisioned for myself since I first decided to switch to a career in teaching. Having not just the freedom, but the mandate to dig deeper on a smaller number of topics. Not just the willingness, but a structure and like-minded teachers to make genuine learning across multiple classes a reality. Not just the occasional project that encourages students to think outside the trenches of a single subject, but projects like that happening nonstop as the underpinnings of each school year. And not just creativity in my, in, in my teaching, but teaching students to think creatively. And here's a final big piece for me. Engineering was a good fit for the math and science geek that I've always been, teaching likewise. But my college years would not have fed me as they did if I had not also been able to play trombone in the engineering stage band uh, or acted and danced and sang in the annual musical comedy review and been able to spend a summer as a camp counselor. When I'm at my best, I'm drawing on all of that as I learn and solve problems. At Innovation Lab High School, I get to be a part of that full, well-rounded growth of my students, not within the narrow confines of a single subject or even within just the confines of academic growth. Through Crew, I'm going to be able to ask each student, who do you want to be? How do you want to be seen? What do you want your community to be? And help them to find those answers for themselves and for their community. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate your words today. Uh, next up, I'm going to introduce Amy Baker. Amy is going to be our special education teacher at Innovation Lab, and she's coming to us from Kenmore Middle School. Hello. The idea of inclusion for all is one of the reasons why I am so excited to work with students and staff at the Innovation Lab High School. I'm excited at the opportunity for students to receive additional support in the classroom alongside their peers in all facets. The collaboration and flexibility that will be offered at Innovation Lab High School is so important for growing crucial life skills. I love the idea of crew and being part of a crew. And over the years, as I've worked as an educator with some students who really struggle who, to find their purpose, I love that we are planning for the many ways that students will be involved in their education. Thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate that. Next up, we're going to hear from Kirby Morgan. Kirby is going to be teaching math and English with us at Innovation Lab, and he is also coming to us from Bothell High School. Indeed. Uh, I've been teaching now for 19 years. Uh, my first three years of teaching were at an online-only school, so recent events have felt like a coming home in some ways, uh, but certainly used to thinking outside the box there. Then I taught at Canyon Park for three years, and then finally the last 13 up at Bothell High School, which has been a great experience. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I am an odd duck in some ways. Uh, I am an extreme introvert, believe it or not. Um, I struggle with noise and chaos of large crowds and things like that. Uh, I think very differently. I'm always asking, how can we make this better with whatever I'm looking at, especially the teaching that we do, which might make you then wonder why I would be teaching in the first place. Uh, because certainly I don't fit the general description and the expectation about what a teacher is supposed to look like. But I've discovered through my time in teaching that that's actually one of my biggest strengths. It's the way that I look at this world and this profession and what we do so differently. 
And that is exactly what I wanna help bring to Innovation Lab. I want our students to see that you're not locked into a particular box. You can do all sorts of different things. And it's a matter of seeing how can we build on your strengths to make that unique for you. And so where we might feel limited, instead we actually may find out that that is where we can have the greatest impact overall. Uh, in addition, I am gonna be teaching math as I've been teaching math for a very long time in addition to English, uh, which I'll be teaching here at Innovation Lab. But in particular in math, I've often felt like we focus far too much on memorization, algorithms, and things like that. And we really wanna get the focus back on problem solving and really solving the real world problems that are around us and seeing how we can apply the mathematics to those situations. And so we're looking forward to creating a math curriculum where students can really dig in and engage with that mathematics in a very relevant way. Thanks so much, Kirby. Next, I would like to introduce you to our American Sign Language teacher at Innovation Lab High School, Stacy Hutchinson. Uh, Stacy uh, comes to us with an incredible background, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hello there. Uh, my background, I am actually coming to teaching from the field of audiology. I got my interest in sign language and it just ended up being a course that I never knew was even out there for me. And so I'm excited to be part of Innovation Lab because of this mission to teach through collaboration. It allows us to become that stronger community and allows all voices to have a say. Employers are looking for individuals with strong problem solving and collaboration skills from in everything from engineering to medicine. If we know employers want this, why shouldn't we teach our students how to do it? Um, Coming from the medical profession, collaboration is something you have to do in order to get a proper diagnosis and treatment and getting those different voices to make sure that we're really treating the whole person. I'm glad to be able to be one voice at the crew at iLab and be able to be part of the conversation to guide our students on their path to finding their way. Maybe it's a path they never considered or even thought of a way to get them there. And I come to teaching that way and I'm excited to be a part of this group and listening to those other people, it just makes me even more excited. Thanks so much, Stacy. Next up, I wanna to introduce to you Carlos Lazo. He's coming to us from North Creek High School and he will be teaching Spanish for us at Innovation Lab. Uh, hi, my name is Carlos Lazo. This is a way that we are gonna start the class every day. I uh, believe in music as a way to, to learn Spanish and to connect with the world. I come from North Creek High School. I previously, I, I have taught in the uh, North uh, Shore School District for the last seven years. Previously, I, I used to teach at the University of Washington and I'm joining the Innovation High School because it presented opportunity for me and for the students to work together in dreaming and making dreams come true. I believe that education should not just be about instruction, or curriculum, but also about helping a student to wake up their intellectual curiosity and enjoy a full life with a full purpose. In Innovation High School, uh, will pro it, it will provide me and it will provide my students with the opportunity to discover ways to understand, learn uh, the reality in different perspectives and to have compassion and become global citizens. I want my students to imagine the possibilities to live a life full of purpose. And I, will, I want for, for, for them to understand that imagining and dreaming is the first step to changing the world. Thank you so much, Carlos. Thank you. Carlos is a little bit too, uh, too humble to mention it, but he is currently the author of the number one book on Amazon right now, Spanish language autobiography, or Spanish language biography, I should say. Uh, so we have a Amazon bestseller author on our staff. Uh, next up, I would like to introduce Dori Whooper. She's gonna be teaching English and social studies for us at Innovation Lab High, and she also is coming from Bothell High School. <laughs> Yeah, there's a group of us. So good evening, and I'm just thrilled to be here and to be joining uh, Innovation Lab. Um, and I've I've worked in um, 
in North Shore my whole career, first at Canyon Park teaching an integrated humanities course. So um, I'm excited to get back to that. I've always been um, sort of a, a multidisciplinary, both learner and teacher. And to me, to integrate language arts and social studies is, is natural. Um, I'm also a practicing historian and writer, so I feel that I bring just some very unique um, potentials and experiences to Innovation Lab. I grew up in East Africa in a very multicultural, uh, both school and just upbringing. And I think that I can really model for our students what it means not just to, um, to be innovative in our, um, in our schoolwork, but just innovative in thinking about how we, um, we embrace different people and collaborate with people from, from every place. Um, as far as what I'm hoping for Innovation Lab students, I'm hoping that it'll be a different, a really different approach to their education. It's going to be very collaborative of that, I'm just um, deeply sure. I think that there's going to be a wonderful community, and I'm excited for each and every student to be part of it. Um, as has been mentioned, the learning will be project-based and as everywhere possible, student-driven. And um, I, I'm really excited to, to be a part of that. And I, I hope that students will see us, their teachers, as uh, more as facilitators of their own learning and learning along with them, rather than just, you know, sort of deliverers of, of pre-designed pre content. So that's my hope for Innovation Lab students. I hope that uh, our work will be relevant to them now and later, and I hope they'll feel confident to take the risks. We're all in this together. We're the crew with the boat. Um, and I, I look forward to meeting everyone uh, as soon as we can. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dory. Great to hear from you. Last up, I would like to introduce our physics teacher at Innovation Lab High School, Alex Verga. Uh, Alex, welcome to the program. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Peter. What brought me to Innovation Lab High School was the chance to be a part of a school that's designed to reignite students' curiosity, help them pursue their passions, and discover their purpose in life. My purpose in life is to educate and work alongside students as they grow into the people they want to be and head off into a world that they will change for the better. I feel grateful and privileged to have found my purpose in life and to be working at a school that aligns so closely to it. Innovation Lab um, will be different in so many ways, not just for students, but for teachers as well. I'm so excited to work with so many genuine, brave, and inspiring educators, and I look forward to meeting our students and starting this amazing journey together this fall. Thanks so much, Alex. So that's our staff. That is the collection of amazing educators that they, they, they dig in and they cannot wait to create something fantastic for the students of Innovation Lab High School. Every week when we get to the end of our staff meeting time, I'm the one that points out that, uh, hey, the time's done, you're off the clock, and they just want to keep going because they are so passionate about what they are doing because what they are doing is their purpose. So that's our staff. Uh, Dr. Reed, I, I wanted to bring you back on and see if you had any more comments that you wanted to uh, to talk about before we went to questions. No, I was just really impressed. I think that often uh, staff introduce themselves to parents and students uh, and rarely share their why. Uh, so I've just really been curious and enjoyed hearing the why behind each staff member's reason for being part of Innovation High School. Um, I know I'm repeating myself, uh, Principal Shirky, but if there's ever been a time where we need to think about innovating and incubating new ways of doing teaching and learning, it's now. And um, I think that, uh, I don't believe 
public education will ever be the same after uh, we find a vaccine for the COVID-19. I think we've learned a lot and we're gonna need to continue to learn in ways to allow us to nimbly solve these uh, major uh, problems that I think we're facing. I couldn't agree with you more. So at this point, we were hoping to take some questions from the audience. Dr. Malloy, do we have any out there that we can? We have plenty. So I um, am, have been monitoring the questions that have come up. So I wanna make sure that um, we go through these in a, in a logical order, but I have to give a personal shout out to someone that I know is watching all the way from Massachusetts. Um, this individual asked whether or not we would be accepting boarding students. She's so excited about the program. So um, anyway, hello, Michelle, and thank you for, for watching. Um, anyway, there are some broad questions that I think if you just had a a brief uh, bit of moment to just clarify some uh, some of these that would be helpful and then we'll get into some of the other details. Um, first of all, there's been a, a broader question um, asked by some individuals about, um, you know, just how how is Innovation Lab different from the typical high school? Well, in a typical high school, students go to their math class and they learn about math. And that's the last time they talk about math that day, unless it might come up in their science class when they're using some math in, in terms of a calculation they might be doing. They'll go to a science, science class, and when it's done, it's the last time they talk about science for the day. When they go to their English class, they're only talking about English. At Innovation Lab, we have this idea of a central project that is tying everything together so that when they are looking at, at it from the perspective of a scientist in their science class, or from the perspective of a historian in their his history class, or writing about it in their English class, they're seeing the connections between the disciplines as they are very explicitly drawn out because they're all studying about the same things. The fact that our teachers are spending so much time planning with each other and will know very clearly what they're, what each other are doing in their classes means they'll be able to reference back and forth. Hey, that thing you're learning over there in your English class, that's how it applies here. Great. We, we heard from Dr. Uh, Wagner in when he was here in February, innovation almost never happens at the core of any discipline anymore. It happens at the margins between them. And that's where the space where we want to be putting our students. Thank you so much. So I'm going to get into some more specific questions and please know I will be monitoring the chat. Um, those of you who've been asking a couple questions about um, things, just know that I've, I've noted them and I'm going to ask them in, in, in order. Um, so one of the things that people are wondering, um, Principal Shirky, has to do with like what specific classes people might expect. Um, so if you could just speak a little bit more to how um, how what kinds of classes people will see at Innovation Absolutely. Lab that they'll experience. And would you also speak to some of the elective classes that um, we know that are in typical traditional comprehensive high schools, such as band and orchestra, um, things like that? Absolutely. Every student can expect to have core classes on their, their schedule. They'll have English and history and a math class and a science class. For the overwhelming majority of our students in the first year, that class will be physics. Uh, the reason for that is that physics is the most fundamental of the sciences. I have noticed as I've been going through and looking at our students' records, we do have a couple students who've already taken physics, so we will have to be figuring out something for them to do as well because we don't want to make them repeat ground they've already covered. Uh, in terms of uh, other things our students will be taking, every student will be signed up for a foreign language. The two languages, as you've heard, we'll be offering are Spanish and American Sign Language. All of our ninth graders can expect to be signed up for a health and PE course, uh, so we can make sure that we are getting them uh, a good foundation in health and wellness. And for our sophomore students, uh, they have a couple of other elective offerings. Uh, Mr. McTavish will be teaching a uh, computer sciences class, and we have a uh, hopes to be uh, hiring soon somebody to take on an art class as well uh, because that is the other elective that was the 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 other of the top two choices of our students as they were applying we used the information we gathered from our students to generate the classes that we would be offering 
Great. In terms of the other things you were asking about, things like band and orchestra, uh, it pains me to no end that that's a conundrum we haven't fi uh, figured out yet. It's a problem that we're going to continue to, to work on and see if we can't figure out something for students. But we do have creative people who are already thinking about ways to bring music into their classrooms. The one thing we don't have is a facility that has a band room. So we have to be a little more creative about the way we make music available to our students as part of their curriculum. Great. Um, so the other questions that are about the school program, um, I think there's been a, a question about like, what would a typical day look like for a student at Innovation Lab? It actually depends on what day it is because crew being that central thing that ties the school together has such an important role in the school that it moves around depending on what the day is. It's at the very beginning of the day on Monday to help our students transition out of the weekend and into a successful week at school. On Friday, it's the very last part of their student's day so that they have a chance to recap their week and send themselves off to a good weekend. It's in the middle somewhere on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because that's a, a place for us to, to be really digging into some of the the uh, social emotional learning, the culture building of the school, uh, having our, our crew leaders checking in on their students to make sure they're, they're making the progress they need to be making in their courses, et cetera. Um, over the, and crew is actually one of the classes students will take. It gives elective credit toward graduation if we were tra tracking credit hours, which now we're not. So it's, it's a place where they will be able to pick up skills to use toward their mastery transcript instead. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have you know, classes in their, their six academic courses and crew at some point during the day. Great, thank you. So there's been a couple questions and I think that um, um, it, they're important ones. They're specific to math and to physics, right? You've mentioned that for the majority of students, there will be physics classes at the first mm -hmm. science class. There is a question about what type of physics um, will be studied. Is it quantum physics, quantum mechanics? Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? And then um, would you also comment on math? How will Innovation Lab High School students um, be ensured that the trajectory that they're on for mathematics will be met? So we chose physics because, as I mentioned before, it's the most fundamental of the sciences. I'm a former uh, science teacher myself, and the thing that has always bugged me about the traditional, uh, the traditional path for students is that it's done in alphabetical order because people have this fear of math in science. And since biology has, seems to people to have the least math in it, they put freshmen in it first. Biology has the most memorization of any science, and it's, it may actually be the hardest because of that. And in physics, we can teach students how the universe works. If you know physics, it makes learning chemistry easier. And if you know chemistry, it makes learning biology easier. It doesn't work the other way. So that's why we chose physics at the ninth grade level. No, it's not gonna be quantum physics, although if students are interested in doing a dive in that as part of one of their individual projects, we, we will welcome and support them in any way we can. It's going to be traditional Newtonian mechanics, uh, looking at uh, waves, looking at electricity, et cetera, so that students have that deep fundamental understanding of the way the universe works before they head off in the next year to chemistry and the year after that to biology. And, and then how about math? How about math? So we're gonna look at where students are and continue to move them forward. Uh, we are going to be offering all the courses that students need. Um, however, the one place where we may be different is that we are looking at and acknowledging the fact that while calculus is incredible and students will want to be on a trajectory to get to calculus, the reality is people use statistics and probability in their lives far more than they ever use calculus. And we believe that students should make sure they master a, a, an understanding of statistics and probability. And with that can come some other really cool things, discrete mathematics, uh, game theory, et cetera. And so we are looking at instituting a statistics and probability course for our students 
before they head off into the calculus path to make sure they're not missing out on something that they are going to be using for the rest of their lives and that too many people do not have a good enough understanding of. Great, thank you. So there is a question that's been asked multiple times um, yep. about school colors and the mascot. School colors. Our students will pick the school colors when they arrive in the fall. I am not going to be responsible for picking those school colors and have all the students mad at me. Well, I could pick them. I'd be happy to pick them. <laughs> I have looked at the colors that have already been used, and we've come up with a list of colors that haven't been used yet that will suggest, hey, these haven't been used. You want to try any of those? But I think the students should have a say in that. Same with the mascot. The students should have a say in what the mascot is. I, Dr. Reed, I know you have thoughts. <laughs> I do. I like the lambs. I really think the lambs would be, uh, or the bumblebees. Yeah. Right. And, and we will make sure we bring those forward as suggestions for the students to consider. <laughs> but ultimately, I think it's the students of the school who should get to make the decision about what their mascot and their colors are. Fabulous. Um, I'll just answer the question that um, is is sort of floating around out there with some of the wonderings, and that is, you know, what about the 11th and 12th graders? Well, right now, Innovation Lab is opening um, as a high school uh, for our for incoming ninth graders and incoming 10th graders, and so. Um, decisions about 11th grade and 12th grade course options and things will be something that happen in the future. Is that right, Principal? Shirky? Absolutely. And. When we're getting to the, the middle of next year and beginning to forecast for the following year, we will be asking our 10th graders, what are the electives you might want to take in 11th grade? Mm -hmm. And using that information to try and make sure that we are offering the courses that our students want. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so another uh, set of questions has to do with um, the kind of work that students should expect at Innovation Lab High School. We know that um, teachers are already working on figuring out some really great project-based interdisciplinary um, expeditions uh, mm -hmm. for their first um, couple of weeks of school and that their interests will generate the next set of expeditions that happen. Um, we know that teachers are collaborating and creating um, great, um, just uh, unique experiences for students, but what's the, what's the typical work gonna be like? I, I think we would be remiss if our students were not working together more than they're working apart. If we really value collaboration as one of the skills that our students should be taught, our students need to be immersed in situations in which we ask them to collaborate. If we really think that communication is one of the critical skills our students need to learn, we need to put them in, in situations to practice communicating with each other as much as possible. If we want them to be good critical thinkers, we need them arguing with each other and, and pointing out and debating with each other so that they, they learn to turn a problem inside out and think about it critically. And if we want them to be creative problem solvers, we need them to be put in situations where they have to observe and, and come up with uh, a, a real sense of empathy for the people living through a situation and then from that begin to try and develop solutions. It's part of it's part of the idea of design thinking that we want to be incorporating into our students' learning experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, we have through one of our our uh, our partnerships that we've formed over the course of this year, uh, been able to get a set of rubrics for those critical four C's: communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and and creativity that have been developed with uh, amongst groups of educators across the country at, at the, from K through 20, uh, who, who have done a lot of work in coming up with a standard we can use to help students see their progress and growth in those skills. Thank you. So if I'm a student at Innovation Lab High School, what should I expect in terms of homework? I don't want to speak for my teachers because they there may have there may be a night where that we got to get this done before tomorrow. I need you to take a look at it. My personal belief on homework is that the only homework students should be doing is something they they are so passionate about they can't put it down. 
Um, I am not a big fan of sending home worksheets for the sake of sending home worksheets. I think that learning should have a meaning and we find that meaning through deep, rich projects that have, have some meat to them. And that if it's hard for students to collaborate and communicate if they're all by themselves and they're the only ones who are uh, in the room working, struggling with a worksheet. So I, I'm not a huge fan of worksheets. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of homework. I think that whatever homework students have, there should absolutely be a reason behind it. Great, um, thank you for that. So now I've got um, uh, some other questions about, you know, there are students who are very interested in Innovation Lab High School and who are very passionate about music. Um, and so, you know, it may be disappointing to hear that we're not gonna be able to, to offer those um, courses as we would in a typical comprehensive high school. Are there any other alternative ways that perhaps students can engage in some sort of music Well, we, just because we don't have the, we don't have the space or the facilities to operate large performing groups, doesn't mean that we, there's nothing we can do about music. Uh, we are going to be encouraging students to form groups, form clubs, and in, there will be a time set aside once or twice a week for students to be meeting their groups, their clubs, their interest, uh, their interest groups. And the expectation is that every student will be in at least one of these groups. If several students wanted to come together and form a performing group, I mean, the, the, the neat thing that we, I've heard Dr. Reed comment a couple of times, the neat thing about jazz is that the rule provides for improvisation. Having students coming up with something and driving that themselves is totally within the, the design. It's within the improvisation of the, the design in uh, inherent in Innovation Lab. Mm -hmm. Great. And there's nothing to say that in future, as we figure out a way to make it more concrete, and we have more students showing interest in it that we couldn't find a way to have some sort of formal class in, in music, be it a, an instrumental, wind instrumental or a, a string instrumental. Okay, format. so I've heard a lot about how, you know, as, as the school continues to grow, right? And as more grades um, are added um, and as all of the students are getting known by the, faculty at Innovation Lab High School that their input's gonna be really important in framing opportunities and, and potential future classes as well. Is that, is that fair? Oh, absolutely. And going back to my, my presentations back in February, one of the things I mentioned was that Innovation Lab High School may look very different in week three than it did on day one. And if it doesn't look different in year two and year three, then we're not doing our job because part mm -hmm. of our mandate as a school is to be that incubator for innovative new ideas, mm -hmm. to try things out, to, to respond to student input and student needs and come up with new ideas for ways to do things. Okay, fantastic. Um, so let me just go through this, the screen again. So there's been a question about CTE classes. Um, yeah. And, you know, we have in our um, school system CTE classes that maybe are offered at a particular satellite school. So, for example, um, people who are interested in um, the sports medicine, uh, they if they go to that class, they attend that class just at that particular school where it's offered. I think it's at Bottle. Yeah. I can't remember. Forgive me if I'm not correct. What about if I'm an Innovation Lab high school student? Um, am I going to be able to access those courses? We're only bound by the bounds of our creativity, right? So if we have a student who wants to access that that kind of a class where they they're might need to go to another campus, the question shouldn't be, what are the reasons we can't? The question should be, how can we creatively make it happen? Uh, there might be some roadblocks that we have to overcome but look at what we have done 
since the beginning of March? And how could we leverage the technologies that we have been using to make courses available remotely that a student might not have been able to attend easily in person um, as just one example of a way that something could be done. I'm not saying that's the way it would be done, but that's just an example I could come up with off the top of my head mm -hmm. using what we have already learned. Uh, my, my idea is that we should be working for students, the school should be working for students, not making students work for the school. And if a student has an interest it's it's incumbent upon us to try and figure out a way to help them chase their passion. Yeah, great. All right, so now I'm gonna get into some other questions that are, um, well, there's actually a question that I'm, it's a broad question and I'll um, invite Dr. Reed to weigh in on the answer as well. Um, if you uh, wouldn't mind Dr. Reed and then Principal Shirky, you can also um, comment on it. But there's been a question asked about um, a couple of them, and they're related to the, the high school transcript. And one individual is wondering, you know, if there's a student who um, is applying for college and has AP credits on their transcript, um, and in comparison to a student who is going to be attending the Innovation Lab High School and who then has this mastery transcript, is what what is the thought about whether or not the student with the AP credits um, and the Innovation Lab Mastery Transcript credit, who might have the better chance um, in terms of perhaps in, in being admitted to a college? Well, Dr. Malloy, that is a fabulous question. And my response would be, it's not an either or, it's an and. The Mastery Transcript certainly allows for AP um, designation. And AP also enables dual credit at many universities with certain proficiency scores, generally a four or five on the AP exam. So we actually, there are expeditionary high schools around the country where students don't necessarily take the AP course per se, but take the AP exam and score fives, fours and fives. So we would encourage AP designation on a mastery transcript. It's not, a, it's not an either or, it's an and. Right. Yes. In addition to the list of skills that the students have acquired and the links in the portfolio that is live linked to the, the transcript that show the artifacts that demonstrate that proficiency, there's also a list of the courses students have taken. And if the students have taken AP chemistry, that, that designation shows up in that list of courses. Mm -hmm. There's a question too um, about IB. What if a student wants to be a part of the IB program? In this case, if they want to be part of IB, they would need to enroll at Inglemore High School because that's where International Baccalaureate, that program resides. Thank you, yes. Um, and so now there's another question. And, and again, these are kind of, um, I'm, I'm, I've grouped the questions into, you know, kind of the ones about that are specific to the Innovation Lab program. And now here are some others that are um, outside of the just the typical school day. Um, one person is wondering whether or not um, they would be able to get credit for an extra online course that they might take um, outside of their regular school day at Innovation Lab. Would they be able to get credit for it if they got if they did all the work for it? Well, I, one of the things, and I think Principal Shirky can add to this, but essentially what I would say is we're going to, Innovation Lab High School is going to be, in many ways, looking at blended models of learning um, and incubate sort of our blended model for our high school students. So we're going to be, I think, at Innovation Lab High School, very nimble on the online front. And again, when you think about mastery, if the online course generates mastery, just as we're in that context today, then I'm quite sure Principal Shirky and his staff would be thoughtful about granting credit, right? So Ab um, Absolutely. The beautiful thing about the mastery transcript is that it doesn't matter where it was the student showed mastery. If they've shown mastery, they've shown mastery. So um, the Mastery Transcript Consortium, in fact, has an example transcript up on their website in which one of the artifacts was an extracurricular project that the student did all by themselves and uh, used to demonstrate mastery of one of the critical skills the school had uh, had decided needed to be on the transcript. 
Mm -hmm. I think also, uh, Peter, one of the things we looked at during the presentation is sometimes mastery might occur in an externship uh, where students, right, students might be placed at Fred Hutch doing research or Amgen or some type of a community internship or externship and that project they work on in those lab settings potentially could be the project that gets captured for their transcript to demonstrate mastery um, because learning actually can happen in the summer. It doesn't only happen during school. Uh, so it's just, it's a different way of looking at education, um, which has been a long time coming, I think. Yeah. So um, someone's asked an interesting question about, you know, the, the um, type of person that Innovation Lab would be really a great place for, or maybe um, the best fit for. And so the person's wondering, you know, if I'm an individual who um, maybe doesn't enjoy that collaboration with people as much as maybe a, a classmate does, would I find my would I find my place at Innovation Lab? Well, I would point you right back to what Mr. Morgan said in his introduction to the the community about he himself is an extreme introvert. We recognize at Innovation Lab that it, it takes all kinds of people to build a community. And so what we want to do is try and help students build their skills in the way that they can come along comfortably and continue to build those skills along the way until they reach a level of comfort where they can engage increasingly more and more and more in, in some collaboration that may not have been as comfortable to them when they first arrived. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, there are some individuals who are now starting to ask questions about, you know, what are what are the supports going to be for students who might be entering Innovation Lab and who um, have an IEP or a 504 program? Um, how will they get the support that they need in order to thrive and succeed there? Great questions. We we do have a special ed teacher. Uh, we introduced her today, Miss Amy Baker, uh, who's already been sitting in on IEP meetings for incoming students. Um, we, we have our counselor, Chase Stevens, who will be uh, one of the point people for making sure that all of our students with 504 plans have their accommodations met. And every student will have their crew advisor, a, a staff member whose job it is to get to know them personally, to get to know their family, to, to be their go-to person when they're struggling. The, every student will have their, their crew mates who are their mutual support network. So the goal at Innovation Lab, every student is deeply well known. And we try and make sure that through that, uh, through that crew culture, every student has all the support they need to be successful. Thank you. Um, so now there are some, um, just some specific uh, questions. Um, if I'm a student and maybe I know that I have autism, um, and, uh, is this a good place for me? Yes. Yeah, excellent, thank you. It's, it's just that simple, yes. <laughs> um, a couple of other questions now are much more specific and they're kind of nitty gritty. Um, so one of the first, I know um, Principal Shirky, you'll be able to answer. Um, can I still get in? Can I still enroll in Innovation Lab High School? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the lottery is long since over. And we are now simply in a rolling admissions and we are accepting students on a space available basis that if, if we continue to have space available, we continue to accept students. Uh, we have plenty of room still in our, uh, in our 10th grade class especially and still have quite a bit of room in our ninth grade class. Great, and there are some <laughs> questions about numbers. So Dr. Reed? Yeah, if I could, yeah, just share that. I think we've been, um, the space is actually becoming increasingly more limited um, as we had to put a pause on our, um, how do I say, our registration process because of a pandemic. Um, but we do encourage uh, those students who think this might be a good fit to think about sending that application in. We've had a lot more interest in the school since the pandemic um, as students and families are contemplating alternative models 
uh, for instruction potentially for the fall. Um, and because Innovation Lab will be um, incubating some new ideas that we hope we can bring to scale in time. So uh, we're excited about that. I will also say that just this week, our capital facilities team finally uh, received our permit from the city of Bothell to finish the construction necessary, which gives us a little more space to start with. Um, and that was really great news. So we're gonna be able to accommodate uh, some more students, which to Principal Shirky's point, uh, we do have a little more room than we thought. And uh, the permitting came through and we were thrilled with that. So. Um, we are still accepting applications for incoming ninth and incoming 10th graders. Um, in the subsequent year, of course, there'll be 9, 10, 11, and then eventually we'll have a full 9, 10, 11, 12. And the school is slated to have no more than 600 students when it's fully enrolled. So we really want to keep it as a small choice high school and not lose that sense of community that we feel is important when you incubate new ideas and new innovations. Thank you. Um, so there's been a couple questions asked about the facility itself. Um, there's some curiosity. Um, some people have gone to the address for the school and seen that it looks like it's in an office park. Could you speak to that? And then also, could you address um, how we have uh, come up with the, the name Innovation Lab High School? Well, that's great. Um, so it is an office building, and um, but it's an office building without offices in it, other than Mr. Shirky and the staff. Um, and we actually were looking for a facility. A lot of innovation schools start in non-traditional buildings. And so we're excited to have a building of that size that we can retrofit. And our principal, Shirky, and the staff are working with architects, um, and they've looked at innovative schools around the country in terms of the types of facilities um, are most conducive to incubating innovative ideas. We're also working with Microsoft as a thought partner um, and looking at different technologies that will be uh, unique to Innovation Lab High School. Having said that, um, Tracy, what was the second part of that question? Um, how did we come up with the name of Innovation oh, Lab High School? Right, Dr. Wagner was really key that Innovation Lab High School, we need to name it what it is, right? And if we move down a traditional high school naming path, um, we're really gonna lose the spirit of the program, which is really about being a lab school. And a lab school, a lot of universities have lab schools where they take new ideas and bridge cutting edge research into the classroom. And we wanna make sure that we're signaling to students and families that we're taking the most current educational research on innovation, problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity around the world and integrating that into this program, incubating those ideas in a lab setting. And um, it's really not a traditional high school. Thank you. Um, so then some last questions that have um, come in. Um, there's definitely an interest, um, Principal Shirky, on knowing whether or not there will be dances and other clubs like we see in high schools. I believe if the students want clubs, the students should have clubs. If the students want to have a dance, we'll scare up the chaperones and we'll find a DJ and we'll have a dance because you know they, they're just because they're coming to our lab school doesn't mean they should be missing out on any other part of the high school experience. We're not gonna have varsity sports teams. Our students who want to play varsity sports can play for their home area high school. Other than that, our students should be entitled to every bit of a high school experience that anybody at any other school in the district should be entitled to. So that means that there's gonna be a student council as well. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I caught in the uh, chat, somebody was curious about the Inglemore question maybe being presented differently. So yes. I, the answer to that is going to Innovation Lab High School for ninth grade and 10th grade, certainly you could still make a transfer to Inglemore for 11th and 12th grade and be very well prepared. So that would not be a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that said, I think once I get them in the door, they're never gonna wanna leave. Well, there is that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I, uh, what percentage will the language class be taught? I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, well, probably, you know, I bet Tracy it's connected to the Chinese language program where there's a percentage in English and a percentage in the native language. 
Possibly, yes, but we do know that we'll be offering Spanish and ASL as a typical um, world language class, and so kids should expect those courses to be similar to what you would experience in a traditional high school. Um, and there's a there's a curiosity, a little bit more information um, is, is people are interested in about the mastery transcript. Um, do we have an example of what that looks like? Uh, what should we anticipate that being like? Well, we're negotiating that right now. Um, there was a board meeting with the mastery transcript and um, a group that's actually putting together a learning management system that feeds it. And the website for mastery transcript has options on it and examples on it, um, but how it'll be uniquely matched because we're gonna be one of the pilot sites. Uh, we're still developing that unique uh, Innovation Lab High School slide, but there will be, a, uh, there are slides and examples on their website. Great. Um, I want to make sure that I'm getting to as many of the questions that I saw that have popped in just recently as possible. Um, Principal Shirky, can you talk about grades and grading and tests and what that what the whole process of maybe getting feedback about learning might look like? Yeah. So in a project based sort of sort of environment like we're going to have at Innovation Lab. It's the, it's the authentic work on projects that students are doing that demonstrates the learning. Uh, one of the things that's a great frustration in education is the, the cycle of cram, test, dump that goes on in students' minds. They cram as much material as they can until they get to the test and then they forget it immediately afterwards. Tests, it turns out, are some of the worst ways to measure learning. If you wanna measure learning, you give some a student a complex problem and have them figure it out and produce something at the end that they can show publicly. And that's part of what our plan is that it, we will have periodic public celebrations of learning. Well, we, we will invite the community to come in and see the products that our students have generated from their learning expeditions. Um, in terms of grades, Yes, we will have grades because if a student transfers out of our school, we need to be able to send a transcript with grades that, a, that another school could pick up. However, what we want Innovation Lab to be about is the learning, not about the grade. Some of the feedback we've heard from teachers throughout our, uh, our experiment in North Shore Learns this, this spring has been how freeing it has been for students to just simply learn without worrying about a grade and how much more students are freed up to dig into the learning they are doing. Students don't have to have a grade held over their head as, a, as an extrinsic reward. If we can help them develop such a passion about what they're learning, that they don't wanna stop. Great, so what I'm hearing is that if I'm a student who um, attends Innovation Lab High School and uh, then I will get, I will have grades given to me, especially if I wind up having to leave for whatever reason, like let's say my family moves, I'll have some, uh, I'll have a transcript that will make sense to another high school that I might go to. Um, and then I'm also hearing that um, there will be lots of opportunities for me to get feedback in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, there's, a, there's a question um, about what would happen if I enroll and then I'm like, eh, know if it's the right thing for me um so what we have what we've asked from families is a commitment for one year uh mid-year transfers are rough on the family they're rough on the sending school they're rough on the receiving school it's really hard to put a a schedule that makes sense together for a student who's coming in mid-year and so what we ask of families is give it a solid year and then if you're if it's just not the right place for you then will we'll help you get back to your home area high school. Of course, in, in extreme circumstances, I would always work with a family. Perfect, so then there's another question that we've gotten about Running Start. Can you talk about how um, Running Start and Innovation Lab might work? Running Start is not out of the question from Innovation Lab. However, I would have a concern about a potential disconnect students would feel between the integrated learning environment that they're having at Innovation Lab and uh, you know a, a way of learning in which all of their courses tie together 
and then taking themselves out of that to go part of their day over to the college where they're taking, say, a history course that is just history in a silo and how that might really be jarring for them. Uh, they would lose touch with some of what is going on in their education and innovation lab and be getting a, a very different experience at the college. Could we do it? Yeah, we could do it. I just, I, it, it feels to me like students would have to be giving up so much to do that, that they may find that they don't want to. Well, right. plus really running start as a junior senior program and for the coming year isn't an option. It isn't an option for this coming year for any of our students. Right. Yeah. So um, sounds like though, based on what you've shared about the program and the intensity of the deep dives into um, problems and the, the work that students will be doing in terms of their um, collaboration, their creative problem solving, their critical thinking, that students will definitely be prepared for the SAT if that's something that they wind up wanting to do in preparation for um, a college um, entrance work. Oh, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. I have no doubt that our students will be prepared for whatever kind of future that they want to pursue because ultimately students who have learned at a deep level and mastered their subjects, um, that learning sticks. Mm -hmm. and, Great, okay. can you talk a little bit more about the health and fitness and how that's gonna work? Yeah, we don't, we don't have a gymnasium in a traditional sense. We don't have any basketball hoops up, uh, but we have a lot of options thinking outside the box. Uh, there are walking trails near our campus that, that we could do walking and fitness. Uh, we've looked at, uh, toyed around with the idea of things like yoga or aerobics or dance as possibilities that could, we could, uh, could think about. And so there's all sorts of ways that we could help students get an understanding of their own health and fitness without needing a weight room or a basketball hoop. Great. Um, there have been some questions about just how many um, how many teachers will wind up being at Innovation Lab High School, and what's the class size going to look like? Like, what could I expect if I'm a student? How many other students will be in my crew, for instance? I'll answer that. Thank you, yep. Tracy. Uh, you we, we've made a commitment in the North Shore School District, and this is from the boardroom to the classroom, that all our programs will be resourced similarly. Uh, so Innovation Lab High School staff-wise will be resourced similarly to our comprehensive high schools um, and our other secondary programs. Any choice program will operate within the same financial confines as our traditional programs. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's now, let's see, some people are wondering about um, transportation. How am I going to get to school if I... Um, and somebody who um, typically rides a bus to my high school. I can take that one. Uh, we're gonna operate using the same model, model as an existing school in our district, the, the Secondary Academy for Success. Uh, students can ride a bus to their home area high school and then catch a shuttle over to Innovation Lab. Um, that, that means that we will actually be starting about 15 minutes after the comprehensive high schools to allow for that, that transportation time. After school, students then ride the shuttle bus to their closest home area middle school and catch the, the district transportation home from there uh, because that, that way the timing matches up. Mm -hmm. Great. And so then there's been lots of questions and I've been kind of holding off um, about this one. There's a lot of interest in knowing not just about sports, but esports because of that comment that was made mm -hmm. earlier about esports. Yeah, we are we are exploring possibilities with esports. We're trying to be very intentional about finding uh, a a league in esports that is set up well for academic use in in the high school and is also well set up to address equity issues um, so that all of our students would have a safe place to participate in esports. Um, the first year is likely to be a year of adventure as we're getting out there and trying to find the right fit for Innovation Lab High School and forming uh, the, the foundations of a team. 
and getting into uh, into this arena as as quickly as we can to to really provide something cool for our students that doesn't exist anywhere else in North Shore. Great, thank you. So there's a question about French. French is not currently one of the world languages. If I'm a student who's transferring in and I am a sophomore and I already have a year of French, what what are my choices? Well, we may have to get creative and try and figure something out. Uh, just because French is not being offered in our first year, as we grow, it's possible we may grow to a point where we could, may or may not be able to, uh, to support a third language, but there are always options if you're creative enough to look for them. And we will just have to get creative about trying to figure out a way to look for them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So I'm going to have I'm going to ask one more of the questions, um, and I apologize if I'm not getting to every single one that's been asked. Um, we will do our very best to add to the FAQ that's online um, about Innovation Lab High School already. Um, but there is a great question that just got um, plunked into the chat, and that's how are the students? How could the students of Innovation Lab um, who have registered and who are um, enrolled in the program, how can they get to know one another over the summer? That is a fantastic question. And I have that's one that I've been toying with in the back of my mind, and I'm not quite ready to, to bring anything out yet because I wanna make sure that I'm not putting something out there into the universe that's half-baked. But that is a thing that I have been thinking about and trying to come up with an idea for how students can begin to connect with each other in a way that is safe and uh, that that we can make sure that that the the whole culture of crew is being supported through it. Excellent. Um, so thank you very much. I there's one question that I have the answer for right now. I think um, right now the question is what about lockers and storage at Innovation Lab? I know that there are no lockers right now at Innovation Lab. There are no lockers. <laughs> there will be no lockers. There will be ways for students to store their things, though I'm sure as as we. Um, have the have everything sorted out. Um, so I, I think that takes care of the majority of the questions. Some of them were repeat questions that we addressed earlier in the broadcast. And since this was recorded, um, everyone can go back and refer to um, the earlier comments that were made if people hopped on at a later time. Um, but uh, Dr. Reed, I'll turn it back over to you for any closing remarks. Um, I just want to thank people for being invested enough in the future possibilities of education and innovation to stay on with us this evening and um, encourage each of you to be thoughtful about the best fit um, and would invite you, if you have further questions, to email um, or check out our website. I think Alex might put the banner on the of the website. There you go. So if you have further question, there's uh, Principal Shirky has done a virtual tour of Innovation Lab High School, and there's a great deal more information on the website. So I would invite you to be curious and thoughtful as you contemplate your future. Uh, you never know when uh, life will throw us a curveball. So um, innovation is, I think, uh, really the um, coin of the realm at this point. So anyhow, Thank you for joining us this evening and we wish you a safe and happy and healthy June North Shore week.